Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner, continuing from the previous video. We talked about some terminology about the different uh, variables that are associated with wave functions, uh, with sinusoidal waves. Uh, now we're going to rewrite this in complex notation, and I, I surely hope that this is not new for you. Um, if, if this is unfamiliar for you, if this is new, then you need to go study complex uh, numbers. And the good news is you should be able to pick it up in about a week and understand everything that works. Um, the bad news is, is there's some details that you're going to miss that become important. So you're, you're going to want to study complex um, numbers until you get super comfortable and you understand the edge cases and everything like that. So uh, Euler's equation could be rewritten, Euler's formula could be rewritten in this way. Okay. So E raised to an imaginary power is basically cosine minus the imaginary of the sign of the of the number that you have there. So this is a complex number. You have a real and a complex part. The complex part is not imaginary. Or the, the, uh, I'm sorry, the imaginary part is not an imaginary number. You know, the imaginary part is sine theta. So um, you could rewrite your function f of x comma t as the real, well, see cosine theta. So we just take of a e to the i times kappa x minus omega t, remember omega is kappa times nu, the frequency, plus our delta, okay? And that will give you the same function, okay? And the beauty of this is now you don't have to worry about, you know, what's cosine times cosine or anything like that. You can just do straight uh, multiplication using how you know how powers interact with each other. Um, another way, um, anyway, so real re is the real part. So this is just the cosine part. We're dropping the i sine theta. Um, if we had a complex wave function, f with the squiggly hat, okay, because we're going to get back a number that's both real and imaginary. Um, so we have a squiggly hat a, this complex a, e to the i kappa x minus omega t, okay. If we had that kind of function, um, the complex f amplitude, this guy can absorb this part right here, right? So your A curly bit is equal to your actual amplitude times E to the I delta. Dude, I'm not good at writing the deltas the way you're supposed to write them yet. Um, so this is really, this is really a cool consequence of this is now that you can do this, you can start pulling it apart and uh, reducing things to things that you're used to. Um, so now we have a simpler notation to work with where we just worry about powers and exponents and we don't have to worry about um, cosine, sine, uh, and the different trigonometric rules and identities. So next we do example two. Thanks for your time. Bye.